I'm here with Dr. Romano to review general chemistry concepts. Hey, Dr. Romano, I heard on SDN there's not that many orbital questions on the general chemistry section. Wow, really? As a good rule of thumb, whatever you hear on SDN, do the opposite and you're usually in good shape. So whatever you hear on SDN, I don't think I'd even waste my time even listening to anything or anyone on SDN. So why don't we come around and learn the concepts and stop the stupidity? I say to you, what fraction of the total number of electrons is in P sublevels for iron? Well, we look up iron as 5626F8. There are 26 protons here. If the element is neutral, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So what I'm gonna do is use the Aufbau principle and I'm gonna fill up the electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. And that gives me the total of 26. You just gotta be careful of an anomaly. Experiments show that after the 3p comes the 4s, then the 3d. But this is still the valence shell, the outermost shell, but it comes at a lower energy. So what I want you to make sure you understand is when you do orbital filling, that after 3p comes that 4s, then the 3d. That's a short bet on the exam. Now, we have a total of 26 electrons. How many of these electrons are in the p sublevels? Well, there's six from here, six from here, it gives me 12. 12 out of the 26, or 6 thirteenths, would be the fraction of the total number of electrons that's in the P sublevels. Letter B. In vanadium, the orbital containing the valence electron is blank. Well, vanadium is 5123V, and I'm gonna shoot for the number 23, so it's 1S2, 2S2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, that gives me 20, and 3d3. So the orbital containing the valence shell is the outermost, which would be the 4s. Finally, is it paramagnetic? Paramagnetic materials are slightly magnetic if there's unpaired electrons. Do we see any unpaired electrons? Well, it ends in a d3. There are five d orbitals, so I'm gonna place one in each using Hund's rule. And as you can see, there are indeed unpaired electrons. So when the electrons are unpaired, it's paramagnetic. If you had something in which all the electrons were filled up, such as in zinc, then we would say that zinc, zinc would be diamagnetic. Because in zinc, you would have the d orbitals, there's five of them, and if you remembered Hund's rule, and zinc ends in a D10. So it would be diamagnetic, which means it would actually be slightly repelled by a magnetic field. These are very important questions. We have a lot of these type of questions in the destroyer. In our new edition, I wrote up many challenging questions that are sure to bet to land on the exam. All right, this wraps this tape up. I hope this helps. See you in study group.